My mom and I have lived together for almost a year. She is selfless, generous, loving, and beautiful. She thinks she is fat. She once got turned down for Weight Watchers because she didn't have enough excess weight to be admitted to the program. She thinks she is stupid. My mom, who won the New York Spelling Bee for middle schoolers when she was only in the sixth grade. I'm so many of the things I am because of who my mom is and who she wants me to be. I was valedictorian of my high school. She seemed proudest that I graduated high school still a virgin. I try to draw boundaries with my mom because lately there aren't any. She is caring for my children right now so that I can be here in class, more like a co-parent than a grandmother. But I accept it because as a former kindergarten teacher, she is so adept in that role. She taught my boys how to recite the 44 presidents, just like she taught me when I was four. I see myself in them, reciting, receiving praise. She has completely changed her life because mine fell apart. I write letters to her in my head every day, ones of immense gratitude for facilitating my return from the bottom. But when we speak, in the few fleeting moments when the kids or my dad don't need something, it comes out like, is the dishwasher clean? And if not, should I run it? Or something else inconsequential about laundry or groceries or aspects of daily life. I've spent uh, a considerable amount of time with Donna over the years. She is caring, loving. Um, she is probably the most polite client I've ever had in 25 years of doing this. Uh, she's bright, but um, not analytical. Um, she's kind. Um, she's someone I like. She's someone I care about. I would go so far to say that. Um, and that's, that's odd for me in representing a client. So um, I guess I'm up here to try to paint a different picture of them, a picture that I know to be true. I know I know who Donna Adelson is because I, I know I've spent time with her. I, I know her character because I've been with her. I've seen her act in certain ways. Um, and so she's very different than what people assume. Um, and so, you know, to the degree I can paint that picture, I'm happy to do it. And I don't know why it is. Um, it could be from the years of representing her. It could be that she has some similarities to my own mother. Um, I don't know, um, but I definitely have an affinity for Donna that um, that I don't usually have in clients. Um, I care for her very much, um, uh, but but I first met them in, I guess, in, uh, the fall of 2016. Do, do you speak to her every day right now? We'll, we'll get more into her in a moment, but do you I talk do. to I her speak, every day? I speak with Donna every day. Um, uh, now that she's in general population. But she was book 
walked into the jail here, she made a statement that she wanted to die. Now, before she was arrested in Miami, she also had a phone call with her son, who's obviously in jail here. 25 minute phone call. I personally listened to it. She um, very clearly spoke about a plan to kill herself using sleeping pills. If One moment, Ms. Adelson, please keep your comments to yourself. Let your lawyer argue on your behalf. very loving. I think she's a very dedicated grandmother. She spends a lot of time with them, doesn't she? She does, yeah. And when they were little and you first moved there after Danny's death, how much time was she spending with them? When I moved there after Danny's death in 2014. How much time was your mom spending with the boys? I mean, we were all living together at that point. So I mean, we were spending every day together. Um, I don't think I responded. I think they're just emails from my mom to me. No? Okay. Mostly all from your mom? Yeah. Okay. And the email address is Wendy Harvey. Can you tell from the content that it's your mom typing yeah. rather than your dad? Yeah, the email's Donna Harvey, my two parents' name, so they, they've been married over 50 years, so they have a joint email address. And what I want to draw your attention to is specifically the part that reads, your father has made numerous trips by plane for weekends and changing the patient schedules around so he can continue to spend significant time with the children. So that paragraph, isn't that paragraph going into detail about how the issues surrounding your divorce and litigation is financially impacting in a negative way your parents' business? That's what my mom says here, yes. Okay, and it also says, additionally, this loss of income affects my family because my older brother, also a dentist, purchased the practice for my father in mid-July 2012. He has a monthly payment to make to my father based on the sale of the practice. It isn't fair to him to have decreasing monthly income statements from the practice due to my parents spending so much time here in Tallahassee. So this is an argument that your mom is proposing, right, to help you, give you an idea of what might persuade the courts to allow the relocation. Do you agree with that? Yes, that's what she was doing, yes. Okay, and she's indicating that both your parents as well as your brother have suffered financially as a result of you not being able to relocate. Yes. Okay. And on page, it reads, however, the rest of your life and consequently dad's, mine, and yes, even Charlie's, will be affected by how well you can perform slash act before July 31st. You need to be a good actress when, you, or you can be a good actress when you want to. I've seen you in action. You need to put on the performance of your life. Jibbers hasn't beaten the Adelson family yet. Who's Jibbers? Jibbers, she's referring to Danny. And what is, was Jibbers a name he went by or just something you called him behind his back? Jibbers was a silly nickname that I gave him during the divorce proceedings when he was being pretty scary and threatening and it kind of made me feel less scared of him. Okay, so not something you called him to his face? No. But that was a word that was only used to describe him? Yes, it was a nickname. Okay. So in, did you discuss your marital problems with your mom at all? I did, yeah. Okay. What about the resulting legal issues? Was your mom read in on those things? I mean, I definitely updated her about the results of the relocation when that petition got denied, but not kind of the ins and outs of every part of our divorce. I want you to answer the question. What was the most important part? Of the divorce for my mom. Yes. It says here that for her, it was relocation. All right. And did your mom call Dan any disparaging names around this time frame? Well, I just read them in the emails, but okay. I don't remember them independently. Okay. Did, did she call him an asshole? Yes. A narcissist? Yes. A bully? Yes. Religious zealot. Yes. Bastard. That I don't remember. Page five. Okay. Is it page five from the first email? Yes, if you'll just go through by the physical pages. I see, yes. I'm sorry, what was your answer? Yes. Fucker? Yes. Uh, threaten Dan to convert the kids to Christianity so that they can fit into the Bible Belt here in Tallahassee. See, is that something your mom suggested in these emails? My mom did suggest that. Okay, and specifically, this is on page seven of the exhibit. Let Jibbers know that your children will be baptized in the Catholic Church. 
have a picture made of them in front of the church, all that kind of thing. That's what what your mom suggested at one time. She did, yes. On Emails. page 11 of the exhibit, there's an indication from your mom that Charlie it, at least has discussed this with her and maybe a somewhat supportive. Charlie brought up a good point when he said that Americans were dropped behind enemy lines during World War II wearing Nazi uniforms to get what they wanted. They had a job to get done and they did what they needed to do to accomplish it. You have a job to get done in a very short time frame to accomplish it. If you dressed your kids up in Hitler youth uniforms and brought them down here, I could care less if it was an act of defiance that would show gibbers that he's, all caps and bold, not in control. So it just seems like your mom was pretty extreme about this situation of getting you relocated. Can you agree with that? Yeah. All right, and Charlie was at least consulted on it or had offered some information about it. Well, that was my mom's rendition, so I don't know if that's what actually happened or if that was her perception. Sure. Were you involved in the effort to consult a lawyer about the bribe and whether that was going to be legal? I wasn't the lawyer consulted in that. No, no. Were you involved in consulting a lawyer with your mom? Do you know for sure if any of the any financial offer was or was not made to Dan Markel? I couldn't say for sure if they made it to Danny without me knowing, but I don't I don't think so. Is that something they would do is try to negotiate with him behind your back or deal with this situation behind your back? I don't think so. I think I would have known. How were your parents employed? Are they retired now? They're retired now. What are they retired from? Um, my dad was a dentist and my mom used to coordinate, um, kind of be like an office administrator at his practice. And did she write the checks at the practice? Paychecks? Yes. Mm-hmm. She handled all the bookkeeping. What was the name of the practice? The name changed over the years, um, but probably the name when they retired was the Adelson Institute. And how often did Catherine Bannerman receive checks from Adelson Institute after that? She received two checks a month. until May of 2016? That's correct. All right, if you could walk us through, here are just an example of three different checks. Mm-hmm. What can you tell us about, well, first of all, I asked you who signed all the checks and you said Donna Adelson. Can you show us the signature on these checks? Right here. Okay, this so is Donna a, Sue Adelson. Yeah, that's the um, signature one. Of all of them. And what can you tell us about the memo lines of these checks? The memo line uh, reflects the date she would have worked on each of these checks. Okay, so they reflect kind of like the pay period for that amount? Yes. Okay. What other records did you review with respect to her uh, employment at Adelson Institute? Um, The only thing I received from the subpoena was a a quick book summary. Okay. What was the total net amount received by Catherine Vanois from Adelson Institute from September of 2014 to May of 2016? It was $17,729. $17,729? I believe so. And did Adelson Institute provide any type of employment application, timesheet, W-2, tax filing, performance evaluation, job description, anything like that for Catherine McDaniel? No, they did not. Did anybody pay you for your part in the murder other than Charlie Adelson? No, ma'am, they did not. All right, and the payments from Charlie Adelson, did those include the checks that were signed by his mother from yes, the ma'am. Adelson Institute? Yes, ma'am, it was. Did you perform any job at the Adelson Institute? No, ma'am, I did not. You didn't go up there and clean on the weekends? No, ma'am, I did not.
just come over and say, I, I need to talk to you. She sat down on the couch right there. I was sitting here. And she didn't say, look, Mom, this is a horrible time for all of us. Charlie's on trial for his life. We're all aggravated. But this is what I'm saying. Just sat there. But never suicidal. I'm going to make correction. I'm not suicidal. I'm fine. Boys tomorrow night. Yeah, it's something nice. Now, am I suicidal? Do I want to go to sleep and not see my son? I do. Perfectly honest, I do. And we'll be doing it. We'll do it together. Leave a note. I'll know when to come here, and we'll do it together. We'll gonna make a decision at some point. So after speaking to Dan this morning and knowing what they're thinking up there, I don't know if we'll make it out in time. I really don't. But Dan said. You might, or you might get all of it, get to the airport, and they'll stop us. And that could happen. It could happen. I don't know, but it's worth a try. So I wrote back, okay, we have no desire to speak with you about the case. I guess Dad and I are just shocked that you didn't think of coming to see us or even calling us. We are your parents. We are and have always been there for you and the boys. None of what we wrote matters about the case. That's over. I just want you to know how many times Charlie is asking about you. Not only do you not ask about us, but not one question about Charlie, right? We will need to give you some information shortly, and we need some business assistance. Please let us know if you can be of any help. I have a space here. I want to get the pose. We're going to be gone. I want her to have all this information. I have the, I have the cemetery property. I want her to see all that. I want her to have all these papers and the wills. I want her to see all this. So please let us know if you can be of any help. The other thing is the visa, which she would know about. But no, I said we need, we need some business assistance. Please let us know. If not, we'll try to find someone who can help us. It needs an immediate reply so I can start asking other people to help And then she always gets nervous if you want to talk to her. So I wrote, don't get nervous. Again, nothing, capital letters, nothing about the case. Just would like to show you some business stuff and personal things. If you can't do it, we must find someone who can. I hope you understand that it has nothing to do with the case. There is no more case. And then I wrote, by the way, you said you have to focus on the boys. Have you told them? We have to get them downloaded. And the other thing I don't understand, how my daughter can help me with it. We've been looking it up over and over. Because things change if there is extradition from Vietnam because we, we've looked at all the places. I mean, I could go to Korea and China, but there's no extradition. But we're looking for places where there's no extradition. Who? Oh, really? Good. Maybe she knows about Maybe she can look up the extradition issue yeah. before we wait for a time. She can tell on me that my parents are going to be in the back of the lawyer's office. But if you mention it to Wendy, what are you going to tell? Well, we tell her beforehand, I need to tell you something as, as an attorney who doesn't, doesn't talk and has nothing to do with the case. It just has to do with mom and I and some decisions that we have to make. Uh, yeah, I know you want to bring it up and show her where everything is. Because in the plane crash, no one's going to know where anything is or who belongs to what. So I would like her to come up here so she can see it. I don't think that's asking too much. She can live three hours alone. Every time she says, can you do this? Can you come here? Can you do this? Everything. How many times do we have plans that I really can't have to cancel? Wendy needs us for this. Wendy needs us to babysit. So we've been really good nannies, and I oh, guess yeah. our, our job is up. Because now the boys are older, they can go out with friends, and they can do things on their own. So she doesn't need grandma and grandpa. Okay, pretty hurtful. I have one son that I don't speak with. I have one son who's close to being dead. And my daughter, whom I love, is doing this. I don't get it. I don't get it. I said to Harvey, I said, God, our family was cursed. We were cursed. And I don't know how to take care of it anymore. So 